Hello, this is the Green Corn Rebellion Show. I'm Gregory Harden II, and today I'm here with my friend, uh, Jacob Rosecrans, who is the state representative for District 46, which is the West Norman area. How are you doing today? Doing great, Gregory. Thanks for having me on. Um, this is a, a lot of people don't understand that January, some people think it's like dead week, you know, kind of before test or whatever, but January before session is one of the craziest times of the year because this is the time where you're putting pieces together, having the meetings for your bills. If you think your bills are going to have any support, you'll see it pretty quick. And these are all things I've learned through just being here doing it. They don't train you about this. Like my first time when I was elected and they were like, oh, it's time to write bills. I mean, I was actually looking through the statutes myself, forgetting that we had staff. <laughs> so how far I've come. <laughs> from 2017 the second part of 2017 to to 2023 now oh my gosh uh, it feels it feels like 450 years <laughs> but it's been like six so no i'm doing good ready to roll i'm happy to talk to you all right well uh whoa whoa whoa, whoa, whoa. stop what you're doing okay if you like this video and you like the other content on my channel please hit the like button on this video also, go hit subscribe, like right now. And also, when you hit subscribe, click the bell so you can get notifications whenever I put out a new video. So, thanks. All right, enjoy the rest of the video. Yeah, that was the first thing I wanted to talk about was some of the bills you're proposing this session. Um, I wanted to ask specifically first about the bill that you authored to repeal hb 1775 mm -hmm. yeah yeah no problem i'll i'll ho i'll holler at you at that um so what people don't understand about that uh 1775 some people think that it's a ban against crt um but it's so weird when you talk to the authors they'll be like uh well house bill 1775 doesn't mention crt well that's my freaking issue okay so you're going to create you're going to go all the way through the system of, of the legislative system to create a bill to ban something but the language is so broad that no one knows what it bans in the first place except for almost free speech so and that's coming you know everybody's like well why didn't you try to repeal this in 2022 instead of, you know give it a couple of give it a year well, I wanted to give it a year to see if there really was this issue. My gosh, I mean, if it's such a widespread issue, 1775 is going to root it out and we'll see all these reports and blah, blah, blah. And there's been nothing. There's been Tulsa Public Schools um, and Mustang, and they really had to look for those. And what I mean by that, you may know this already, you may not, but well, Tulsa, that, that report was turned in by a very, very far right teacher, um, extremely far right. She's indoctrinating her kids. Um, and so, but they took it seriously and it went all the way up to the school board and they lost, you know, they took a, a, a hit on their accreditation, which is ridiculous. And then, so they were like, well, we don't want to just you know, hit the blue cities. We got to find one of these, you know, Republican areas too. Surely they've done something wrong. So they had to look through, go back in and finally found about Mustang, which self-reported something like a trust walk which the person the teacher had like a worksheet and all it had on it was like white privilege by accident i think i don't even think that they even knew or cared but they had a worksheet and there it was and they handed it out self-reported district took care of it everything was good and yet still under 1775 they had they were struggling again to find things happening they found the perfect thing and then they could say well it happens in mustang it happens in tulsa it happens all over the state that's a sh uh, crappy bill that has no really doesn't need to be in the books because of all the confusion that it causes now i have been there's been a lot of coverage on my bill which is house bill uh 1340 31 40, oh my gosh i almost can't remember 1339 um, i think yeah hold on um yeah 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 house bill thir uh, 1037 um so uh i have a list here <laughs> And it was my very first one that I authored too, because repealer bills are pretty easy, are very easy. It just says we're repealing the statute. Um, but I couldn't believe that I got coverage so much. KOCO, KFOR, you name it, all of it. 
I try to do my best on bills that really will pass. And then the one bill where I just know it's not, but we can have those conversations and everybody covers it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was like, you're going to cover this one. I was so happy to have that coverage though, because the conversations that we're having right now, I'm having on e email with constituents and beyond. And people are starting to wake up to the fact that the party of small government that's in charge of the of, of Oklahoma right now is not the party of small government anymore. It's now officially the party that's in power and they are flexing the power, including taking rights away and all these banning bills. So um, and they want to get involved in, in, in pregnant women's decisions and they want to get involved in what and how things are taught at school. We're talking real government overreach. And that's why I um, that's the main reason that overreach and the, the broadness of the bill of 1775 is why I authored 1037. And it won't it won't go anywhere. Yeah, that's always about that was the next thing I was gonna ask is do you think that it's gonna go anywhere? Have you had any Republican colleagues mm -hmm. say to you that they would like to have a vote on it or that they would like to support it? Yes, but I always have that. The thing is, when you have that much of a majority, you're always gonna get people that don't believe in the group think, but they won't vote against the group think. That that you kind of have to give a tip of the cap, because back when the Democrats were in charge, massive majority, that wasn't the case. They would vote with their their you know the, the rural areas and all that. I think what it comes down to, the majority of the Republicans in charge are from rural areas, but not every one of them is. I mean, there's obviously some from Oklahoma City, Tulsa areas too. Edmond, places like that. Uh, Norman has some senators from, I don't know how, but you know, redistricting. And so, so you get those types of things. And yeah, we have conversations all the time. I love what you're doing here. You know, I can't support that. <laughs> That's what I hear. So what I ended up doing, this was always part of the plan. I was going to put that out there, see what kind of splash it made, made a big splash. And then right behind it, I had um, House Bill, I'm looking through here. This one is requiring due process for anybody accused of violations for House Bill 7075. I, my plan for that, and I can't remember what bill it was. Why don't I have it written down? Here it is. Um, House Bill 1339. You haven't heard much about it because I authored it and you didn't get the splash. It should have because it has more of a chance to move than the other one does because who's not for due process for anybody accused of something so broad as 7075? having a tough time with that one too. I figured maybe the Mustang Republican folks would take an interest, but I think that the, the, the powers that be and the fact the governor would never sign. Although I thought, I thought maybe if I could couch it in the fact, this doesn't change your bill. It just protects the folks that are accused or puts in a layer of protection due process for any school employee uh, who is, who's accused of this very, very, these violations, very, very broad statute. Um, and then also, the school itself too, due process before it goes through to the uh, state board of education, which is now officially made in the image. And I mean the full image of governor Stitt and Ryan Walters. So that's a kangaroo court. Um, uh, that's a million percent kangaroo court. So there is no due process. And that one, I just can't seem to get any legs on either. So, I mean, there's other success stories I have with other bills, but the ones that, I mean, I, I 70, 75 is, is my target that bill needs to go a wait so yeah yeah um especially with the one that you have about due process i would have i would have assumed that would have had an easier time because it's kind of basic it doesn't get rid of the law it just kind of i guess in a way improves it <laughs> it does and, yeah. and that's strange and usually you can almost say it's cleanup language but um I haven't been able to get meetings with the people I need to have meetings with there. And I get it. We're all super busy. And if I don't already have a relationship with somebody enough to where I can just text them, it's tough. Well, I need to have a meeting. I need to set a meeting. I need to have a meeting. I need to set a meeting. It's it's tough. That could probably all happen. I'm not saying that thing's dead. I'm not saying it doesn't, you know, doesn't have a chance. But it's gonna take a I almost wanted it to just at least get a couple of Republican authors and co-authors to say, hey, we don't like this. We don't like we get the the way the bill's written and okay we agree with that we want to root out indoctrination blah, 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 blah. but we also want fairness for the teachers in in the schools in our districts i haven't really had that sit down talk with the folks i want to that will continue to be a, a goal of mine especially when we get back in session uh, february 6 because then everybody's where they need to be you know right now we're everywhere else I know where your office is and by golly, I know you're going to be there or I know where you sit on the floor and by golly, I'm going to float by and be like, 
look at this bill. What do you think? So I'm going to keep on trying all that action. But yeah, no, it's it's not getting the support that I thought it would. After the, you know, after the repealer bill. So, yeah. So what other bills are you offering this session? Mm -hmm. So um, if anybody knows anything about me, they know that I've been like kind of a play warrior, focus on play, focus on hands on learning. And one of my very first ideas, Gregory, when I was elected in 2017, right out of my middle school classroom, my very first idea, I went right to OEA and some teachers I knew right away. I was like, how do we change the recess laws? Because right now we are not giving our kids enough recess. And that's anecdotal, just me being a teacher, middle school teacher, just seeing it on an everyday basis and also rebelling and taking my kids out for more recess um, and <laughs> getting in trouble for it. <laughs> but uh, doing it on purpose because I knew that they needed to get out of that darn classroom and get some breaks and some air and some vitamin D and all that good stuff. Um <clears throat> So I couldn't I couldn't get it to move because I just was too new. And then so I started digging in on a different angle, which was playing the classroom, which turned into the play to learn act, which was only ever meant to be a precursor to this bigger lift, which is a recess requirement. But I didn't think it was ever going to pass. And it passed. <laughs> it passed. It got signed by the governor. That was supposed to be basically a resolution. I was like, what? so that happened and so it's unfortunate it's good it's great and unfortunate at the same time because some people think i've already passed a recess requirement bill because of the play to learn act they just didn't read the bill they're like well we love rose crown <laughs> shine me up and uh i guess that's the way i think all the old senators feel <laughs> that's how they sound oh rose Crates, i like your bill it plays important <laughs> uh i love you senators um but uh so this one so basically what uh this is house bill 1081 and it does have legs um senator jessica garvin hopped on she's a true believer in this uh, she sees the same thing i see uh, it's nice because she's from a rural area i'm from an urban area and so we can have those conversations um that's a result of building a relationship through a bill house bill 3047 which did basically the same thing but it was kind of like my ideal version of this and I ran it last year to see what kind of opposition it would get. And it did. It didn't even receive a hearing. So now at least I know who kind of the sides are. And this version is a different version based upon some of the opposition I had. And honestly, I know people are just like, why don't you just push through? Well, as a member of the minority party, any little tiny thing that can sink a bill, it sinks a bill. We can't just be like, hey, will you hear our bill because we're all on the same team no any tiny little things like oh well rosecrans there's this opposition right here yeah we can't really get a hearing i'm like great so i had to go back in and, and really work with uh it's really mostly administrators that don't, that have an issue with it to nobody's surprise <laughs> so i mean more recess what uh but also, I want people to understand this is not just out of left field. Um, we've had an interim study on this that proving that uh, more recess leads to fewer behavior issues in the classroom, uh, even better academic uh, outcomes and better mental health outcomes, too, just by simply letting kids be kids. So this version, what it does, it's pre-K to fifth grade. I couldn't get it to middle school. That's my dream. I can't do it. I just don't have the support to do it that far. Um, if, if a middle school wants to do 40 minutes, there's nothing to stop them from doing so, but the requirements from pre-K to fifth grade. Um, and that's not going to be changing a whole lot. I, right now, the statute is a strong recommendation for 20 minutes per day, which is a joke. Um, but some schools go over that, obviously. Yeah. Some schools don't. And I just want to make it to where this is this is the accepted practice. This is the required amount. Figure it out how you want to throughout your school day, but 40 minutes is what a kid needs. And I put language in there <clears throat> for a strong recommendation of it being at least 20 minutes chunks because that's the that's what the, the the deal is if you want to do 15 and then do that and then 10 here and there no nothing stopping a school district from doing that i'm really just changing the statute to requirement and then letting the locals kind of decide um i also put in language there that a strong recommendation i couldn't ban the practice of taking away recess uh for punishment mostly because i have no way of enforcing that yeah <laughs> and so i don't want to put a mandate there that i can't enforce and i certainly don't want to have to institute the recess police <clears throat> so i was like <laughs> okay we won't ban the practice but i want to phase it out by saying this is not something we need to do leaving teachers still with the right to do it of course but um and for all the reasons i mean i mean gregory it's it uh it, when you take away recess from kids for punishment that usually is what will help them behave better 
in a classroom because they just needed to get out. You know, a lot of neurodivergent kids and, and ADHD, things like that. And a lot of kids have that issue, especially with cell phones in front of their face these days. So obviously a passion, House Bill 1081. It's moving. We're going to get co-authors for it. Uh, I'm going to try to get a hearing for it as soon as humanly possible to get a Republican, a good Republican co-author on it, somebody who I trust. Um, is a huge deal because I never could find one in my previous bill. And that's why it died, because you have to have a a, uh, a Senate author before yeah. you get a hearing for a bill. So there's that. Um, there's another one that seems like common sense, and I don't know why it hasn't moved yet. We're going to find out. Um, that is, where is it? Yeah, House Bill 1039 adding school supplies to tax-free weekend. So, um, yeah, like right now our tax-free weekend is an absolute joke. Just an absolute joke. Because right um, now it's currently just clothes, right? Not even like cool clothes, like yeah. rain boots and stuff, just stupid. And so, and I've been looking at this before too. I got with uh, Angela Clark Little, um, Oklahomans for Public Education. Back in the day, she's my friend. We've been friends pretty much since since the beginning of that, that, that group. And uh, <clears throat> so we were like, well, this is just a common sense thing. And we got talked to Eccles, uh, who's the floor leader. And he agreed. <clears throat> so I tried to run a bill back in 2020 to do this and it didn't go anywhere. And now it was too, still too new. And I had other focuses obviously, cause you know, we run eight bills and we can't focus on them all, but, uh, and I didn't get, you know, a Republican co-author, you learn all these things, you get, get them early. You know what I'm saying? And who, who knew back then, but uh, now I've got uh, Senator Blake Stevens on it, and he's another strong Republican uh, author, a friend of mine. I met him during the teacher walkout when he was running for governor. Um, it was great when he won that Senate race because I was like, well, this is somebody who I actually know. You know, this isn't somebody. And he's very, very, very you know, conservative on the certain issues. But for public education, he is somebody you can trust. And on this one, he also thinks this is completely ridiculous. But what we're running into since you have to do the research on this the, apparently this is going to have quite a fiscal impact because there's a little piece in there that says should a municipality lose however much dollars you know um in tax revenue that weekend the state has to pay it back that's crap that needs to go away but i don't want to mess with that because you're talking about money but that's what holds it back so i don't know if that thing's going to go very far because things with fiscal impacts may not but this is common sense and I, I mean it would catch us up to almost every single state for their tax-free weekend um and i put a list in there and i also made it to where the school board itself could add to the list if they wanted to um you know depending upon what becomes a school supply you know talking about like ipad stuff like that probably not gonna that that, that one we'll see that one we'll see uh to, to it has an author that means it's alive a Senate author. And so we'll see, it's probably going to go through the appropriations, the education appropriations and budget committee. I know the chair there listens to all bills, but at that point it just becomes really difficult because it has to go to the full A and B and that's where you have to have those conversations. So it's, it's got uphill battle, but common sense. And then today or yesterday, breaking news, Gregory, breaking news, <laughs> my bill to um, remove the funding contingency language, House Bill 1037, uh, for school psychologists and audiologists. So right now they get a $5,000 stipend, but in the language there, it says if funds are available. So sometimes they don't. And these professionals are leaving in droves because first of all, that wasn't enough of the stipend anyway, but I didn't increase it. But I just, and this is a request from the Oklahoma Association of School Psychologists. And um they just want that out of there so they can count on their raise. They can count on their, their bonus every time. Um, and so that's what that does. It basically cleanup language. Um, I have tried to run that before. It got lost. Once again, I, you know, when you're new, you don't know what, what's going on. It went, went to the wrong committee. Any long story. How did it uh, go to the wrong committee? Because no one knew if it had a, like a, a, a fiscal impact or not. Really, honestly, it got, lo it got lost. <laughs> and they were like, because, well, don't they already get this? Yes. Well, Okay, but look, you're taking away the funding. How are you going to pay for it? I was like, well, how do they pay for it now? Leave me the hell alone. You know, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> just get out of here with that stuff. Make it guaranteed and move on. And it it died because I I lost it. So this time, and I even told the group, I was like, guys, I don't know where this bill's at. <laughs> so I don't see it. I don't see it. Somebody messed up. <laughs> so that's going to have some support, though, too, because um. Sherry, uh, Representative Conley, who um, who she came in cl close to the time I did, 2018. I came in 20, 
17. So yeah, right around that time. Cause I was basically a rookie in 18. She, uh, she was the Oklahoma uh, school psychologist association co-legislator of the year in 2021 with me. So she believes it too. So I'll have some help there. Um, it's, it's a no-brainer, again, a no-brainer. Little pieces here and there. I've recognized that the Capitol is not a place where big things happen unless it's completely supported by the governor and this, you know, Senate leadership and House leadership. But little things seem to kind of move. And this is a little thing. This is like, you already get this. We're going to make it guaranteed so you can plan, you know, your $5,000 is going to happen. So we'll see about that one. But I do have a Republican author as of yesterday on that one, too. Um, it is uh, Senator John Michael Montgomery. And I say Republican because when you're in a uh, one party dominated legislature, your success chances go up further when it's somebody from the other side of the aisle. I certainly would go to my, you know, Democrat senators as well. Um, but they know that too. You know what I'm saying? Double Democrat bills are very rare to actually get to the governor. And a lot of times he won't sign them. I hate that politics has gotten that way, but that's kind of where we're at. So I do focus on my colleagues across the aisle for these authors. So that's it. So right now I have three out of my eight bills have Republican co-authors on them. And there's another bill that I think might house bill 1036, which is a veteran suicide prevention task force bill. So it's very close to my heart is, is a uh, uh, veterans issues. I mean, I'm not a veteran. I didn't, wasn't in the armed forces, but a lot of my constituents are, my aunt is. And so I've been really dug in on this because if you know anything about me, what separates me sometimes from some of my Democrat colleagues is I'm way pro-military, like over the top, because I figure, and I'm not talking about the politics that puts somebody in the war zone. I'm talking about the people that put their names, you know, on the list to go fight for their country or in service of their country. Cause I can't think of a higher thing. I, I couldn't do it. I, yeah. I man, oh man, boot camp would kill me. <laughs> so I'm like, you guys are superheroes in my mind. And, uh, so that's why, especially once you come back, if you saw action or not, there's still different kind of, uh, that I've been digging in on this for a long time, talking to veterans, the stresses are so different just for any number of reasons. And they come back with a lot of issues, especially if it was an unpopular, uh, like in, like, yeah. a, like Vietnam right now, it's, uh, about, I can't remember the numbers, but we're talking about like 20 to 24, uh, vets who, who die by suicide every day. So, I mean, <laughs> something must happen. And so I took the language uh, from Alabama because just to let people know, I look at red states, what other red states do, because yeah. I'm pragmatic, because you know, I'm not going to be like, well, look what New York does. Yeah. <laughs> Get on it. <laughs> well, California sure is doing great. No, I mean, they may be, but I, I try to couch them. Same thing with the uh, school supplies tax free weekend bill, too. I did what I basically copied what Florida and Alabama do, too, on that one. So. Hopefully those kind of conversations can keep going. Um, I don't have a Republican author for that one, but veterans issues is, is kind of weird because the more I get dug in on that, they want something to be done, but a lot of veterans don't want to, because there's a ton of veterans at the Capitol, don't want to necessarily co-author or author something that will help themselves. I've had to learn that. So, but then also a lot of the civilians are like, hey, why don't you go ahead and get a veteran to run that? And yeah. I'm like, oh, listen, I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> they don't like doing that. They they think it's an issue, hundred percent. All the veterans do. They don't want to necessarily. They'll co-author. They don't want to be the author saying we need this for us. And so that's where I think I'm running into some issues there. But I may get a co-author on that one pretty quick too. So these bills are alive and well. The other ones that I've run, uh, if they don't have an author by now, aren't alive and well. <laughs> that's just all there is to it. <laughs> Right. Um, okay. So one question I have about the recess thing. So in for middle school, is there currently a requirement for time that they have none at all? So if a school district wanted to not give any recess time for middle schoolers, they could do that. Okay. Cause I remember whenever I was in middle school, I want to say they gave us 15 or 10 minutes. Yep. After, right after lunch and lunch was and that's common. minutes. And I felt like in middle school, we probably needed it more than what we did when we were like in fourth or fifth grade in because it was like, it was like, we're only out here for like 10 or 15 minutes. Like, okay. I mean, and your bodies you know, are getting the activity when you're a 13, 14 year old level. Yeah. It's, it's a lot. So honestly, and I can't, I can't do this legislatively, but honestly, 
middle school needs to have the most recess out of all of the other levels because of what we just said. These kids, they're active. They learn kinesthetically, They all this kind of stuff. What my big dream is, is Finland, obviously. Finland education is my big dream. But what my other big dream is that hopefully these conversations we have, and if I was to pass a requirement to where you're going to have to start looking at recess as a required part of the day, not extra, not extra. You can't take can't take a required part of the day away from a kid who needs it. And that's what I'm kind of hoping that these kind of th this bill does. Um, and if it doesn't pass this year, I'm going to try again. This is going to be my kind of flagship bill, if you want to call it that, because it's my passion. It's what I saw when I was in middle school. And I was like, oh, my goodness. And again, I'm going to try for middle school. But I will tell you this through my research on other states that have done this, Georgia being the most recent. Um no one can get middle school. They all start with middle school and you can see through the kind of amendment process, they all go back to elementary because the thought process in this corporate reform education system that we're at is, oh my God, that's not learning. And look, these test scores are horrible. And so why don't we do more test prep? That in itself is the biggest issue and nobody seems even that's a bipartisan thing. They agree, you know, Rosecrans, we need to get these kids ready for the workforce. I was like, in middle school, yeah, get right. Out of here with that crap, man. <laughs> get out of here. And you can definitely have recess time and still do the same damn thing. And if anything, it probably will get you to your goal faster. It's just you've got to redo your mind. It, it, kind of break away from the business world or think about the business world. Can adults sit there for hours at a time and learn real well? No, you have breaks. You have freaking recesses. So don't talk to me about all that. You have a break room in each place and you can freely go there. You yeah, know? and those breaks are usually not 10 or 15 minutes either. Even at McDonald's, we got 30. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Red yeah. Lobster, same darn thing. So it, it, it's... It's having those conversations and the pushback's going to be from administrators still, I do believe. I just don't hope it's as vigorous as it was before. We're going to find out. I've been very open with the group that, you know, that uh, supports or uh, what's the word I'm looking for, represents administrators across the state. I sent them a version of my bill before anybody because I was like, here, pick it apart. And no one picked it apart. So I'm like, okay. You support? Do you not support? We'll see. They know about it, though. And I have a great relationship with the folks in that group, which I'm not naming because why? But um, and uh, so we'll see. But having a Republican, strong Republican author on it does give it more life this time, because, again, they're in the majority. So maybe she could be like, hey, I know Rosecrans, you know, this is a good bill. The intent's correct. Let's push forward. So I'm, that's what I'm hoping for. And that's what I've talked to to Garvin about too, kind of some of the speed bumps. And so she's aware of what's going on. All right. Well, thank you for coming on and chatting about your bills with me. Um, uh, good luck. I <laughs> hope you could come on again in a month or two to see if you got anything passed. And um, is there anything else that you would like to share with us before you go? Well, I want people to understand that we are in a different kind of a world. Like back in the day when what I used to call crazy crap bills would get authored, I would just kind of, and I'm talking about like the doms of the world, things like that. I would just be, I would always caution people to be like, you know, these aren't going to go anywhere. You have more common sense people across the aisle than you think. But in later years, in these last few sessions, what seems to be happening is that some of this crazy stuff gets kind of put in as a bargaining chip. So kind of like the far right or the platform caucus we want to call has a victory too. So I want people to be quite aware that some of this stuff is going to die. What most likely will happen, say for instance, the uh, I get a lot of emails about the, the ban for, for drag shows or cabaret or whatever, right? That's actually a really anti-business law. Like it's really bad for business. <clears throat> and so I'm trying to couch those conversations in that because believe it or not, because some people reached out and they were like, no way this, this moves, right? I was like, well, what will happen? You'll see there's already a bunch of different banning bills. And um, the most extreme one probably won't go all the way through. You'll see kind of a less extreme one sneak through to say something was done. That's the place we work at. So I want people to understand though, too, that whatever you have an issue with, you must reach out to your state senator and your state representative. I don't care if you guys aren't on the same page politically. They're your rep and your senator. They're the ones that were elected to do that. And they need to hear your voice. Um, and, and, and try the very best you possibly can. I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> to um, 
to be positive. Because when you're negative, these guys, I'm sorry, but they treat they treat their their some 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 treat their uh, constituents as subjects, and that's what I want people to understand. It shouldn't happen. So if that happens, call it out. Uh, let me know because you know I'll try to reach out and answer your questions or whatever else. But um, so but that's what happens whenever you have really 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 safe red seats. These folks. They don't believe that they have any accountability because, by golly, the way that they've created their districts, they're going to keep getting elected just with their R by their name. And that's pretty bad. So what I want people to understand is to keep those relationships going, though, because in the end, they're your rep, they're your senator, and they need to know how you feel about all the things. But try to couch it and maybe let's meet up for coffee or whatever else, not I hate you, I'm going to run against you, that type of thing. They don't care. I've seen it on an every, I've seen the emails. They read them, they laugh and they delete. So and I'm not going to name names, but I'm just saying that's what happens. And I know you're like, okay, then why reach out to this person? Because they have to hear you. They have to see you. They have to get to meet you. They're there. I know it's rural areas mostly, and it's hard to get to where you need to go, but they're there to do that. And I know that they're going to be reluctant to talk to a Democrat because they can't really affect their election you know, chances, but they still need to hear your voice. Otherwise they think that, there is nobody who thinks that way in your districts. So keep those relationships going. Reach out to me if you need help or some pointers. Um, and yeah, I'm just happy to be here with you, Gregory. And you keep up the fight as well uh, for common sense. Really, it's turned it's crazy, dude. It's like us Democrats have turned into local control warriors fighting against the overreach of this behemoth of government right now, which is what the De the Republicans used to do when the Democrats were in charge. Yeah. <laughs> We've had to flip, yeah. but uh, we're going to continue doing that. I'm going to continue fighting. Obviously it's my passion for my, you know, for play and all that stuff, but also against the bad stuff and try to push the good stuff. So. Mm -hmm.